Let me give you the definition of an absolute reference first and then we'll go ahead and work it. An absolute reference is a cell reference in a formula that remains the same when the formula is copied to another cell. So for example, remember in the earlier training video we were creating formulas. We went ahead and we clicked in the cell and we typed in the formula and you can see it up in the formula bar. C7 plus C8 plus C9 and then we go to the next one and we do the same thing. What's changing is not the rows. We still want to add up each row but what's updating is the actual column. We jump from C over to D and that is reflective in the formula. So if I come over here and I delete this as a review, and I come in the first cell here and I control C to copy it, and I click in here, control V as in Victor to paste it, or I just click and drag the autofill handle, it doesn't give me the values, it actually copies the formula. But Excel is programmed or smart enough, as it were, to say that when you go ahead and you copy this formula, don't stand in the same column C. Go ahead and move over and update it to column D, as you can see in the formula here keeps the rows the same. See there's 7, 8, 9, and 10. When I click here there's 7, 8, 9, and 10. It just updates the column. And that's the same thing when you're going from top to bottom here. For example, when I click in cell H7, I'm looking at the reference it wants to sum up C7 through F7. But when I come down to the next reference it wants to go from C8 to F8. So what it's saying is go ahead and update the rows where when I'm going from left to right it wants to update the columns if that makes sense because the same thing when I'm going from top to bottom when I'm copying and pasting and I'm referencing everything over to the left it's actually going to keep the range always the same it's going to keep it from C to F so you can see that every time I click on here C to F, C to F, C to F the only thing that we want updated is the actual row we want it to move down in other words we don't want this cell to be reflective of this range row 7 and we don't want this one to be reflective of the one above it row 8 so by default, Excel automatically figures this out. If you're going to copy and paste or use the autofill handle from left to right, it's going to be referencing and updating column by column, as you saw in these results here. If you're going from top to bottom here, it's going to be referencing it or updating row by row. But what would happen if I had one cell, like the commission, I want to figure out my commissions here, that is always going to be a constant because everybody, all their totals are going to be multiplied by this one cell. I don't have like cell below that that says 8%, 9%, 10%. That's going to be a constant, a static cell. So what I need to do is I need to be smart about this. To figure out my commission, I'm going to click in cell J7 and I'm going to type it in, equals and I want to take the first employee's total for these four months, click on it, H7, I could have typed it in. Now, the symbol for multiplying cells is the asterisk. You can hold down the shift key and hit 8 on the keyboard. So I want to take this and multiply it by, what is it, H3. I'll click on that, and there we go. Hit Enter, and I've got the commission for, let's say, this year, for the first four months. Now, what I could do is I could come up here, Control-C to copy it, and paste it here, and paste it there, and paste it there, and I'm getting some funky things, some weird things are going on. Well, maybe I just didn't do it right. Let me hit undo a couple of times, and let's say let's just do the autofill. Let me hit escape to get rid of the marching ants. Let me click up here, grab the black cross, click and drag it down. As you learned this in previous training videos, it does the same thing. It's copying the cell, and it still gives me the same errors. Well, what's going on? Well, let's take a look. Remember that logically Excel wants to update the rows as we go along, and so that's what it's doing. So here it is. I'm looking in cell H7, and there's row 3 for H3 that it's multiplying by. Okay. So if I go down to the next employee to figure it out by copying and pasting the formula, look what happens. It's no longer referencing H3. It's referencing the next one below it. See how it's trying to update it, assuming logically that normally you'd have additional numbers here. And the reason why we get the value is because it's trying to take a number and times it by some text. So when you click here, you can see it's trying to reference cell H5. See how I did that? When you actually click in the formula bar, it actually outlines the cells that you're performing your calculation for. And I don't want to multiply his total here by the total text. I want it to keep it on 8%. Sure, I could go ahead and click and drag it up and then hit enter and that fixes it, right? But I don't want to do that. I want something quick and easy to fix it so I don't have to do this again. I'm going to hit undo. And what I need to do is I need to go back to the beginning, the very first cell and the very first formula that I created, which is a multiplication of, when I click in here, you can see it, these two cells here. I need to say that this cell right here needs to be static. It needs to be an absolute reference that's constant, that doesn't change when I go ahead and autofill or copy and paste this formula into other cells. So how do I do that? Basically, it's really easy. All you need to do is just say, hey, in this formula right here, I want H3 to be static. How you do that is you just come up in here and you click next to or just before the cell that you want to keep as a constant in your formula so it doesn't move at all it's an absolute reference just hit F4 on the keyboard and let me click off over to the right and you can see 
it does nothing more but add dollar signs. Oh sure, you can come in here and uh, let me delete these. You can go ahead and manually type in, let's see, shift 4 to add a dollar sign before the letter H, and then shift 4 again to add a dollar sign before the number 3. That's fine too. And then just hit enter. So now when I go ahead and I copy and paste this, or just click and drag the autofill, it works out perfectly. For example, I click in this uh, cell right here, J8. Normally, without the absolute reference, it would be referencing the next row below 3, which would be H4, and it doesn't. It says, look, stay as a constant and an absolute reference. It's always going to be multiplying in cell H3. So these dollar signs tell it it's a constant, that it's an absolute reference that can't be updated when we copy it and paste this formula into other cells. Basically, all this is saying is that the dollar sign before the letter H means that H is a column header, that H has to be static. You can't move from H to I. It has to stay in the H column. The dollar sign or the constant symbol before the number 3 is for row 3. It has to stay in, in row 3. So that's why we put it in front of the H, in front of the 3, to say, look, keep it in the column H and keep it in row 3, which actually is referencing the cell H3. And that will never change as long as we have our constants there when we copy and paste it saying that, that what we're referencing is absolute it won't update as you go ahead and copy and paste the formula into the other cells or do the autofill hey thanks for watching if you like my video please give it a thumbs up and if you subscribe to my youtube channel as soon as i upload a new video you'll be notified instantly and you can do that by coming over here and clicking on my face you can also click here to support me, so for $2 a month, you can have access to over 2,700 training videos, all ad-free, and for a few bucks more, you can have access to my exercises, instructor notes, quizzes, certificate of completion, and a whole lot more.